And on this video, I made this lovely piece, as you can see. lovely people how are you guys doing i hope everyone is doing fine so guys on this video as you can see this lovely sequence dress here i literally let me zoom my camera as you can see and i'm trying to see if i can use a satin fabric like this and a crinoline to to make it look a little bit different because let me zoom my camera i literally when i finished the dress i didn't like this idea of a shoulder that that i gave to it i'm still going to be putting um a light uh, ready-made um, boss pad here if needed if need be i'll see to that but there's no boss pad at the moment it's just the dress so this you know sequence dresses when you put kind of that i don't know but i'm kind of thinking of what to do maybe use my clean line with my satin to kind of give a little bit of design contemplating on that but uh, i will show you how you can use your crinoline and your satin to make beautiful designs on your dress so let me so guys this is the back view of the dress this is how it looks here i kind of put a little bit of pressing button you can... this is how the back This is how the back looks like. You can see the zipper. I just put the zipper from the waist area there down. And uh, I thought of at this upper, at this area, at this uh, upper area of the center back. I thought of not putting my lacing because. I just thought of leaving it open. I just started my lesson at the, the the level of the chest line there. That's where I started the lesson, so to say. So this is just all about this dress, guys. There's nothing much. It's just a simple one. So ladies, moving over to our table. Moving over to our table, I have this uh, door face satin. A very good one two strip of it five inches and uh, i sew it by a quarter of an inch leaving the other half inch for ease guys i'm trying to remove some of the unwanted some of the unwanted things there so i've got this screen line is two inches so this is two inches screen line while I cut this strip five inches. I use quarter of an inch to sew it, turn it, and I gave it a good press, leaving the other half an inch. Normally, you can cut four and a half, but when you sew it, I notice that it doesn't have enough room that we allow the screen line to relax because you don't have to squeeze the screen line in. You are pulling it in at the same time you want to allow it to relax and not... So I'm going to just like folding it in half, first of all, and try to push it in. So you may want to allow the crino line to have enough room at the end of the day. A little bit room, not excess allowance, which half an inch is okay. Quarter of an inch on both sides, so to say. Inches you can double it depending on the amount of pleats you want to the amount of gathers you want to get or the amount of pleats you want to get out of it so to say you can double it in two or in three or even four it all depends on you so guys let me push in this screen line i think how we use my needle thread or let me cut off the edge here So you try to push in your crino line to the other side. 
It's a little bit tricky though. It's not easy. As you can see, I just try to fold it in half. I'm folding it in half to give it a little bit of stability. Thereby trying to to push it in as much as I can. It takes a little bit time, but we're patient. I think I'll do it the other way around. I'll put my thread. So for your thread, I'm going to be folding it in, in, in half. Use my bigger needle. Get as long as you can manage, not too long and not too short. Just a good length that you'll be able to manage well at the end of the day while making your gathers. So you give a knot, 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 knot. That's how to do it. So at the end of the day, I'm having four. You know. So I want to try to use my my needle now to to pull my crino line out of the other side. I know there are a whole lot of ways of doing it, but let me try to do it this way and see if it will work. I turn my needle upside down, opposite side. I turn it to the opposite side, guys. There are different ways of doing all these things, but whichever way that comes to to your mind at that point in time to simplify things for you, you can use it. There's no milestone. There's no formula that says you must do it like so. I'm just trying to push in the needle so I can pull close. The crinoline is a little bit far from me now from the from the satin. So now it's close by. So what I'll do is try to fold it in half. You may want to be careful because if you put too much, it can also rip off from the crinoline. This crinoline or horse hair bread, some call it, is very fragile. So just because you put a knot there, you still you still want to be careful because if you put too much, the knot may rip off from that uh, from the crino line there, it may end up ripping off. I'm just trying to be careful. Still using my hands to, still using my hands to, you know, guide it, to guide it carefully. So guys, um, I ended up pulling it to this other side. It did not pull out, it's still, the way it is so you try to arrange it pull out a bit and let it relax really well don't squeeze it you can see the five inches that i did was a very perfect measurement for it it's relaxing well you can now cut off your thread please make sure that you have it you can now cut off your thread like so and use your pin please i almost lost it there use your pin to pin down make sure that everything is in place there is no squeeze anywhere you cut it out again like so you can see that you use your pin to pin it down so i'll also do the same thing to this other one because i mean i may be needing two of it before we move over to the sewing machine i'll go to the sewing machine and stitch down here so from this edge to to this edge to hold my crino line in place so let me do that to this other one right now and we proceed. So lovelies, I'm done sewing it. 
on my machine and I'm done cutting out the SS Kino line here on the edges, both edges. You may also want to cut before you sew so that you cut the Kino line a little bit shorter. You can use your lighter to burn these raw edges here. So you may go back to your machine to fold it in again to secure it again before you start whichever design that you want. So design what that you want to it depends on you, it depends on the design. You may want to run your gathers down. This is the right side, this is the wrong side. You know, when I finish sewing, I press it and leave it and leave this your stitching line at this area at the wrong side. So this is our right side now. So you go in with your needle and thread, depending on the effect you want to have. After you must have uh, stitched down this edge here. So guys. So guys, I'm done sewing. What I did on the machine, I literally pull it out a little bit and cut off some excess crinoline and fold it in twice. So the first fold is without the crinoline, then my second fold rested on the crinoline because when the, the two folds are with the crinoline, it will be a little bit porky. And so guys, so it depends on what you want to do. You can, you may decide to go to your machine and make your pleats like so you make your plate whichever design you want to give whatever you want to do you make your plate like so you may decide to use your needle and thread through the center and make your make a gather the gather stitch you know you can run it on the machine because because of the crinoline inside drawing the gathers may be difficult if you run a loose stitch on your machine so i think uh, I think that needle and thread is much, much more better. So you may you can run it at the center like so. This is the effect you have, and you can use a bigger crinoline, please, guys. You can use a bigger one. If you run the stitch at the center, this is the effect that you're going to have. Like so, depending on the spacing, you can make a half an inch, a one inch. It just depends on what you want and the effect you want to get at the end of the day. So. At the end of the day, this is the effect that you are going to have depending on what you want to use it for. So depending on what you want to use it for. So this is the effect you will be having if you draw your gathers at the midpoint like so. So this is the kind of effect you will be having at the end of the day. So if you choose to draw your gathers, let me take this off. If you want another effect, you can no more at the middle this time around and make your gathers. You can create so many, so many lovely things with your crinoline. They have different sizes in the market. So depending on what you want. So this is the effect you're going to be having if you make it right here at this edge. You'll be having a complete different effect at the end of the day. So this is the effect you'll be having at the end of the day. Sorry, let me use my pin to hold that in place. I lost the, the thread there. So guys, this depends on where you want to put it right now. It depends on where you want to put it. That will determine the, the effect that you are going for and where you are going to be drawing your gathers. You see, this is just forming like a kind of rose. So guys, this is it. You can see how how beautiful this is coming up. You can use it to make a bow design. You can use it to make a sleeve design. You can even attach it at the center point of your, of your dress. Just as a design there. So this is the effect that... Uh, it's going to give you you can use it for a design on your hairband you know guys there are different things you can achieve with this crinoline so i'm going for the effect that i'm going to be making the plate at the center because i want it to cover that my boss area right there it's not as if it's bad but i'm just 
trying to make things guys you know now <laughs> yeah. so guys this is what the i'm trying to turn down the this is what the pleats effect looks like this is what it looks like so i'm gonna be making the gathers effect too and i'll place it for you to see so you can make any design of your choice let me zoom a bit you can literally make any design of your choice this is how it looks like yeah i just use my pin to pin it down i use my pin to pin down the plates just at that bust that area there so you walk your way gently down thereby knowing how many inches plate that you are you are taking guys i'm just using my eye to eyeball it you can measure it make sure that it's not going to be perfect but make sure that uh, the differences are not that uh, alarming so that at the end of the day everything is going to align properly well so to say at this point if you have a longer pin like the longer pins the ones that are long much more longer they will be very very helpful at this particular point in time so guys let me know what you guys think at the comment section let me know your thoughts i may also decide i may even decide to just do it on just one side like so you just give it whatsoever design that is and that you want guys you can see So that is how you walk your way. Use your long pins. They are more preferable. Properly well. Before you go to your sewing machine to stitch it down. So guys, this is all about it, how you can literally put your design. I'm going to go up again and reduce my plate because I just want this one, this particular one uh, strip to be enough for me. At one side of my bust that there, I only want to use, I only want to use this one plate so I can see that I... I pleated down much more so I will go ahead later to reduce my pleats so to be sure that uh, at the end of the day one strip is going to be enough for me for this uh, project that I'm doing it's okay for me I don't want to put it on both sides it will kind of look not really good so I'm going to just put it on one side like so and it's perfectly well when you get to the end of your strip later you may want to fold it in don't leave the raw edges that you show outside you just fold it in like so so guys this is all about it and if you decide to make your uh, your raw folds the one like look like rose you can still make it let's assume that uh let me come again that you make your ruffles you decide not to make a pleat if it had been a ruffle so you are done creating your ruffle this is how it looks like so for that you may want to place it at the edge here then the, the ruffle part of it will be showing let me ruffle more let me just make more ruffle um, so guys you can see if you are going with this pattern of ruffles this is what you have at the end of the day so the thing is that you also need to place it 
at this part, at this edge, wherever you want it to be. You place it, and at the end of the day, you're going to be stitching down. And one thing about this one is that the, you know, the ruffles, we just, this is how it's going to be looking at the end of the day. Let me ruffle all and pin it down for you to see. So when you want to pin down, you fold in the edge here. Although it's not really looking bad because we we literally neatly sew it. We sewed it neatly when we started. So you use your hand to control the amount of how ruffle you want it to be. Just use your hands and your eyes to control it. So I left my thread uncut so that it will enable me to adjust as I walk my way down. So guys, this is how I'm just like kind of giving you ideas of how you can use this screen line to what you can use this screen line to achieve at the end of the day. There are so many ways and it gives whatever you are doing that stability. It gives it that stability at the end of the day. It doesn't, you don't need to bother about hair stay or gum stay, you can see. It was just this satin. Let me zoom a bit. So as you can see, it was just this satin and nothing much at the end of the day. So guys, this is how it looks at the end of the day. You can, if you, if you want, there are seven inches screen only and you know, they are 10 inches wide. So depending on the face you want to have, you can imagine if we had had like a seven inches wide screen only and make this ruffle, you see how full it's going to be at the end of the day. It's going to even cover this armhole area here at the end of the day, so to say. So guys, I hope you have, this video will help you to have an idea what to do, how to use your clean line to achieve some of the beautiful effects on your dress, just to give it that uh, neat finishing. This ruffle is really, really beautiful. So guys, um, if, I, if I decide on making this ruffle, I'm going to, you know, this is just for tutorial purpose and I don't want this video to be lengthy, then I would take my time and just evenly distribute this ruffle so that it will look very beautiful at the end of the day you can also make both sides this ruffle it looks good so i'm going to decide on what to make at the end of the day guys <laughs> i hope this video will help you to have an idea on how you can use your clean line to design your beautiful outfit at the end of the day so guys i'll end this video here stay tuned like share my video subscribe to my channels and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.